NBA 2K20 tutorial number 38. Today, I'm gonna teach you guys how to win the combine and become a 2K League player. We will study in detail what type of stats you're gonna need to make it within the combine. If you would like to see more tutorials on uh, how to make the combine in the future, or if you wanna see scouting videos of your peers who are gonna be possible 2K League players, click on the link above or below for my all 2K20 tutorials playlist. You'll be able to find more videos on the combine in the future and also specific skills that's likely going to help you improve your gameplay in 2K in general. So the first stage to become a 2K League player is the, you know, the qualifier. And those requirements are very obvious and very clear. Win 50 games, minimum 50% winning percentage, play in 5v5 Pro-Am, play in Rec and Xbox and PS4. Very clear cut, but the combine is different, much more complicated. So for the combine, the five key stats you need, and I'm gonna order them by importance here. And number one is winning percentage. Number two is your effective field goal percentage. Number three is your usage rate. And number four is your overall steals and your steal percentage, all right? So from this point on, we're gonna refer this, these four categories combined together. We're gonna refer to them as our combine gameplay score. So in short, CGS, all right? So also, as more combine details are released, I will make updated tutorials on this matter, but today we're gonna focus on these four key stats. So based on previous combines and the players who made it in and what kind of stats they had, you're gonna need to do well in the four statistical categories I mentioned to be considered as top 1,000 of how many ever people go into the combine. So, you know, expect like more than 20,000. So in other words, you're gonna need to have one of the highest 200 CGS score for the position you are trying out for. And once you actually do make top 1,000, your written application will also be weighted in. So essentially it's your CGS score, plus your written application, that will get you into the top 500. And that's the leak interview phase. And in the end, your CGS written app and the interviews you do with the league will determine if you make top 200. Now, this is based on previous combines. I will update this if changes are made for the season three combine. But essentially at the end, you're still gonna need to focus on those four key stats, which is winning, EFG, usage rate, and that's the percentage. So check out this screenshot. This shooting guard stat line standing at 16.2 points, 3.1 assists, 2.4 steals, shooting 6.7 mates over 9.6 attempts per game, sitting at 40 games played with 80% of his games won. This stat line made the pool as one of the best CGS score of combine in season two. And yes, this player made the 2K League season two easily. Like this stat line you see that initially does not look too impressive to you was one of the best and this player made the league. Like an ideal combine stat line is not what you think it is. The math is much more advanced at, and there are basic minimums that you have to hit and there are maximum points that if you reach them, you're automatically almost in, all right? So you're gonna have to understand the advanced math part of it of the four categories I previously mentioned. So I'm gonna break them down. So like, Let's look at the CGS score and what's the minimal score you need for each category. So number one, the most important one is winning percentage. Now this is a market-based score, which means it depends on how well other players are doing in the combine in the season you're trying. So in this case, season three. Each position also comes with a different minimum, but essentially you can expect a 62.5% winning percentage to be the minimum across all five positions, all right? You're gonna need 62.5% to have your CGS go and your stat lines be considered as like top 1,000. Like as the combine plays out, I will update you guys what the market score is for winning percentage per position, but 62 and a half you can expect to be minimum. And even lower than that, you, you're pushing it. You're really pushing it. 62.5% is the cutoff. Formula-wise, this is probably the easiest one to do. Like it's wins divided by, you know, the games played per position. That will get you your winning percentage. So the math on this one, not too hard. Now, what you gotta understand is though, like winning percentage is the most important category of the four essential categories. 85% or above here will trump the other three categories. So 
Like if you can get 85% winning percentage, it won't matter too much what your EFG usage rate or your steal percentage is. But historically speaking, I think less than 10 players have ever gotten 85% plus winning in the combine while reaching the minimum amount of games. Therefore, you are most likely going to have to do well in the other statistical categories to stand out from the pack. Secondly, a lot of players will also reach the minimum 62.5% winning percentage. This means if you want to have an ideal CGS and to be considered as, you know, by the end top 250, really, you will need to know how to do well and calculate your own usage rate, EFG, and steal percentage. So we're going to move on to effective field goal percentage. And EFG is also a market-based score per position, which once again, I'll update for you guys as the combine takes place. But for a minimum point of view, you can expect a 60% EFG to be the cutoff, at least 60% EFG. That's minimum. Like the formula for EFG is your two-point field goals made divided by 1.5 times your three-point field goals made and that overall number divided by your field goals attempted. Your field goal percentage is irrelevant in your CGS code because your EFG percentage is a way better stat to showcase how well you're shooting and attacking by valuing the three-point shot as a better, more valuable statistic than a two-point shot. You must understand, like this doesn't mean you shouldn't take two-point shots. If you can make them, it's fine. You know, take all your twos. If you only shoot twos, and you make 65% of them, then your EFG is actually going to be 65% also. But understand this, what the EFG really means is that if you also happens to take three point shots, it means that if you're shooting three out of four in three point field goal attempts, that's actually better than going four out of five in two point field goals attempts because the three point is valued as 1.5 times more than a two. So use the formula mentioned in the previous slide to keep tabs on your own EFG. That's not too hard to do. You just need to know how many two-point field goals you have made, how many three-point field goals you have made. Get those numbers, do the math, and divide that, divide that by your overall field goals attempted. And that number, that final number you get, you need it to be above 60% minimum to have a shot to make it out of the combine. The number is actually even higher for point guards and shooting guards. You can expect that to be 65% plus for EFG for point guard and shooting guard. Last year in the combine, plenty of guards were shooting like 75% to like 85% EFG. Some shot even 90% plus. So that's what you're looking at. Now, let's talk usage rate. This number, unlike winning percentage and EFG, doesn't need to be high, as high as possible. This number needs to be as low as possible. Anything higher than a 40 usage rate is bad, and that might actually just get you like, you won't ever qualify because that's just too high. And anything lower than 20 is elite. Like if you get lower than 20%, you're looking really good to get in the final, you know, top 200. Like this statistics, the usage rate is very important because if your usage rate is lower than 20, you can likely have bare minimum winning percentage and EFG and still make it out of the combine alive like ahead if anything that's how important usage rate is to be under 20. now ideally though anything between 20 percent to 35 percent is an acceptable usage rate score lower than 25 is also really good so anything between 20 and 25 is also excellent but you can go as high as 38 it will still be fine now unfortunately the usage rate this stat is also the hardest statistic to calculate on your own as important as it is in the combine so bear with me as we go over how you can figure out your usage rate plus also how to manage it as best as possible in game during the combine. So the formula for usage rate is as follow and you will see in this screenshot, your usage percentage or your usage rate, the formula is 100 times your field goals attempted plus 0.44 times your free throws attempted plus your turnover, all right? That number is then going to multiply against your team's minutes played divided by five, and, and then divided by minutes play, and then your team field goals attempts plus 0 0.44, plus your team's free throw attempts, plus your team's turnover, okay? Uses percentage is just an estimate, essentially, of the percentage of team's plays that was used by you while you are on the floor, okay? and 
This is likely impossible to calculate, but don't worry, I'll teach you actually how to manage it in game so you can have as good of a usage rate number as you can get while you know not needing to calculate it at all. Because your usage rate is actually driven by the amount of you know your field goals attempted, your free throws attempted, and the turnovers you've gotten yourself. And that number is gonna be competing against the overall amount of field goals attempts, free throw attempts, and turnovers your entire team has combined. All right? This means don't take a shot unless you think you'll make it. Plus, ironically enough, if you are sure you're gonna win a game, it's actually good for you if your teammate miss their shots or they turn it over, since it will lower your usage rate, but it will increase theirs. Of course, you would rather they make their shots, that's fine too, that will also increase their usage rate and lower yours. But if it comes down to just, you know, who's gonna miss a shot, it is way better your teammate miss a shot than you do. The best way to decrease your usage rate while also helping yourself and your team is to get assists. Because when you get an assist, your teammate has to take a shot, so that increases their field goal attempt, obviously lowers yours because you didn't take the shot. And if you, they make the shot, your team gets two points, which you know likely could increases your offensive rating, your chance of winning, increases your assist to turnover ratio, and at the same time lowers your usage rate. So the most valuable stat you can get to control your usage rate is to get an assist. And if somebody has to miss, way better that your teammate miss than you miss. It's very important to understand, okay? Now also, if you're playing in a game that you know you have zero chance of winning, it's best to do nothing but just get assists and just let other people take shots. No one will ever, like no one's gonna win like every game in the combine. However, like you have to understand because usage rate is weighted as a very important statistic. There are actually best and worst ways to lose a combine game. If you're gonna lose a combine game, you wanna lose it with a low usage rate. That way, you are actually considered less responsible for the L than a guy who took the L with a high usage rate. To make sure your usage rate is neat and tidy throughout your entire combine experience, just don't take unnecessary shots. Get assists whenever you can, because assist is actually more valuable than a free point made for you. It's more valuable than that. Don't turn it over. Don't, don't miss free throws. Missing free throws is really bad because you get your usage rate jacked up for the free throw attempt and if you miss it, it hurts your offensive rating and a bunch of good stuff. So, and at the same time though, in a surefire win, like if you know you're about to win that game and your score is looking nice, just make sure your teammates take all the shots because that will lower your usage rate and increase your efficiency and all that good stuff. Now, I can actually calculate your usage rate for you, and you can do that for yourself. But that means both you and I are gonna need to watch the game you played and see how many shot attempts, turnovers, and free throw attempts your entire team had. You have to like physically jot that down. It's easy to find out how many shots, free throws, and turnovers you have after the game, but you cannot find that out after the, your, of your teammates after the game. So you need to like figure that out in game and you can't do that while you're playing. So you will have to probably rewatch the thing and then jot everything down. Like, can you do that for yourself? Sure you can, but it's likely not worth it since you just, like honestly, you only need a usage rate between 25 to 38%. So if you manage, the game as the way I've taught you previously where you're not just throwing up bad shots and you understand in a sure win or a sure loss that your team may take the shots and just try to get assists, you, your usage rate is going to be fine. Now, if you want to reach that elite world cards usage, usage rate where you're aiming to be sub 20%, that, that's goals, but that's literally only going to be reserved to the players who aim to be either like assist guards or only like defensive juggernauts, like, you know, just lockdowns. Like if you're averaging 20 point plus, you will likely never get usage rate under 20%. And that's fine. Like usage rate is not about getting under 20%. Like get it if you can, but if you don't, it's not the end of the world because even having 36, 35 is fine. You just don't want 40 or you just don't want to take bad shots so it increases your usage rate for no reason. Because the lower it is, the better it is. Like 
It's also possible to get 20 points a game while having a usage rate of 25%. That's actually doable if you manage the game very intelligently. This like actually makes you more valuable. If you're scoring 20 points a game with a usage rate of 25%, it makes you more valuable than a guy who is scoring 25 points with a usage rate of 40% or even 38%. That makes you more valuable. And a player scoring 16 points while having a usage rate of 18% will actually be more highly rated than both those other guys who are scoring 20 points at 25 and scoring 25 points at 40%. So you have to play your game. Like, don't try to play the usage rate game because you can't. Like, if you just focus on that, you're probably not going to win either, which is the most important stat. But when it comes down to it, though, at the same time, don't waste possessions while trying to win, trying to win because your usage rate will track that. At all times, try to manage your usage rate whenever you can, especially in Surefire wins and Surefire L's. Get an assist. Don't miss shots unless you have to take shots to win. That's the best way to lower your usage rate. And obviously, don't you know turn the ball over. If someone's going to miss a shot and someone's going to turn it over, let your teammate do it. Because that increases their usage rate, but not yours. That's how you play smart and manage your usage rate. Now, let's go to number four. A very easy step, but also important, and that's overall steals and your steal percentage. Now, you want to average at least one and a half steals a game if you can. It's not the end of the world if you don't, but you need to have a steal percentage of 8% or higher. And even lower than that, 6% is okay, but if you are hitting like lower than 1%, 2% of steal percentage, that's really bad. Like if you have 1.5 steals a game while averaging 8% or higher steal percentage, that will make you look very favorable. Steal percentage is based on how many times you swipe the steal button in order to get a steal successfully. Anything higher than 10% is really good. And if you can average two and a half steals a game at 10% accuracy, that's goals. The greatest stat line ever is five steals a game while having a steal percentage of 10%. Like that's the best ever. But at the same time though, understand this, it is just as valuable to average two steals a game with a steal percentage accuracy of 20, all right? Just make sure you're not swiping at air so that your steal percentage falls below like 3% and at the same time, make sure you're getting some steals. Getting no steals is fine as long as you don't have like a terrible steal percentage. But ideally, if you want to get about 2 steals sitting at about 10% steal accuracy, then you're good. Anything higher than 2, if you're hitting at like 3, 4 or 5 with a steal percentage of 10, you'll be legend. And that would be a very favorable combine stat line. All right, so in my next combine tutorial, I will teach you guys how to calculate your stats on your own. So I will show you step by step based on this box score we're seeing here, which is one of the greatest stat line in the season two combine. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to calculate your, well, I guess winning percentage, that's one, and then your EFG. I try to figure out your usage rate after the fact and also, uh, your steal percentage after the fact. So that's what I'm gonna do for you guys in the next combine tutorial. Obviously, we're still at the qualifying stage, but I wanna talk about this to you guys early, get it done so you all be mentally prepared as to what this is about. Because like I said, if you look at this screenshot, you'll be like, this guy sucked. But no, this guy played great, and he's actually a very skilled player, and this is one of the best combine stat line ever. If you achieve this stat line in the combine, you're making it in season three league, okay? You're gonna make the 2K league if you get this stat line. Um, that's just how it is, with the exact numbers. We'll figure that out in the next one. If you got any questions, please leave it in the comment section. YouTube comments are very easy to track. And for those of you who is thinking, oh, Sam, thank you for telling me this. I'm gonna hog this and not let anyone know so I can win the combine. That's actually not the way. I mean, I'm all for competitive advantage and all that good stuff, but if you are very smart about it, it's actually better if every single person in the combine knows this information. Because you know why? Then all of then you guys will combine together to actually play very smart basketball. Because then everyone will understand you don't need to score 20 to make it to 2K League Season 3. Heck, you can score 8 points a game and make it. 12! You can score 12 points a game and make it. If you hit your EFGs, you hit your winning percentage, you hit your user trade, and you do good steal percentage, you will make the league scoring 12 points a game. That's easily doable. Because that has happened before. Just people don't know this. So if you spread this information around, people will understand if you actually play your role in the combine, you play intelligently to win, and you stay efficient and you play smart with good shot selection, you will make the league scoring 12 points a game playing smart basketball. 
the combine math is so good it actually can figure that out and it actually values that it's just that people don't know so everyone is out here trying to be james harden which hurts everybody because it increases everybody's usage rate or increases the wannabe james harden usage rate and it actually lowers yours which kind of helps you so for all of you out there who is thinking i'm gonna score 30 points and take every shot and make it no you're not that's not how it works that this is how it works so if you got any questions i understand this is not as easy as it can be i try to make this as easy as possible and i hope i did a good job if not i'll come back at it and i'll try to explain it again if you got any questions put it in the comment section as the combine continues i'll revisit stat line that people send me and i'll let you guys know what the market value of each stat is so that you can you know hopefully survive this intense and very rewarding activity that is the 2k league combine all right so if you enjoyed this add a like and like i said you have to show other people this because you want them to play the right way with you just you playing the right way while everyone is playing the wrong way is not gonna work either this is most likely the right way to play now do i have the in definitive answer on this no but do i have the best answer out there available for you you bet you i do because I do, and I'm here to help. So, got any questions, ask me, follow these, and I'll assure you, you will have a very good chance of surviving the combine. And if any, change, uh, and if any changes are made, then I'll update, all right? Because I'm going with what I know, or what I've seen from previous years. Obviously, season three combine hasn't come along, but this is what it was like before. And if anything changes are needed, I'll let you guys know. But it can't deviate too much away from this because this math, this statistical formula, it's just really good. Like, those are the categories you have to focus on because the math is right here. So it won't deviate too much, but would there be minor things? Sure. But if there's any market changes, I'll let you know. I'll update you. As always, thanks again for coming by. And I'll see you guys. I'll speak to you guys again very soon.